Is your GarageBand on iPhone or iPad running the best that it can? Well, in this video, I've got seven simple tips that you can do for free to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible out of GarageBand. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create your best music through tips, tricks, and tutorial videos. So if that sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, please consider subscribing. But for now, let's jump straight in and start talking about these seven tips for better performance. Tip number one is to make sure that you've got enough free storage space on your iPhone or your iPad. Now, I recommend at least one gigabyte, if not two. Now, I know that seems like a lot if you've only got a 16 or a 32 gigabyte device, but Apple use that space to do a lot of background storage of files and caching, which can actually impact the performance of GarageBand and your other apps if you don't have enough space. Now, how do we actually make sure that we have enough space? Well, let's jump in and take a look. To check how much space we have on our device, we tap on the settings option here and then scroll down and tap on general. We're then gonna tap on either the iPhone or iPad storage option, which is right here in the middle. So we'll tap that. And now we can see exactly how much storage space is used and unused. So you can see here, I'm using 57.1 gigabytes of the total 64 gigs. So I've got around about seven gigabytes. So I've got plenty of storage space free. If you don't, you can come down and use the offload unused apps, or you can come in and see which of your apps are using up the space so you can start deleting some apps, deleting some photos and making some room. Now, if you hang around to the end of this video, I'm actually gonna give you some additional bonus tips about how to clean up and remove some of the files and make more storage space. So hang around to the end for those tips. Tip number two is to make sure that you have the latest version of both iOS and GarageBand installed. So how do we check that? Well, again, we jump in here to the phone, we tap on our settings option, and this time we're gonna scroll down once again to general, but this time we wanna actually tap on software update. And this is gonna jump in and check that we have the latest version of iOS, which we do. We've got 12.2, which is the latest current version. To check our GarageBand version, we use a similar process. We're gonna tap on the settings option here, but this time we're actually gonna keep scrolling down past all of these options and you'll see you've got all of your apps here in alphabetical order. We're gonna come down to GarageBand and tap on that and these are our GarageBand settings. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom here and you can see that we've got version 2.3.7 which as of right now, April 2019, is the latest version of GarageBand. So having the latest iOS version and the latest GarageBand version just means that you've got all the latest updates and if there's been any bug fixes or any other improvements or enhancements, then you're likely to have the latest and then for the best versions. Now, some will say don't update straight away if there's a brand new version, and that's potentially good advice, especially on some older iPhones and iPads. But generally speaking, having the latest version of both the software and iOS is going to be your best bet. Tip number three, believe it or not, is to turn it off and on. Yes, this sounds like such simple advice, but it's been used for decades to fix all number of electronic and computer hardware problems. And what it does is it refreshes everything and makes sure if there's anything sticking around in memory or any programs that are causing problems, they're shut down and reopened. So to do that here, we hold down our power button on most of your iPhones and your iPads. If you've got a newer one, like this iPhone XS, you may need to hold down the power button and the volume up button until you get a screen that looks like this. And then we're just gonna slide that power button across. This will shut down our device. We then turn it back on, log back in, and go back to our apps. And you may find that you're suddenly getting better performance because you've had that refresh by just turning it off and back on again. Tip number four is to close any background apps that may be running and may be using additional processing power. So to do that here on our iPhones or our iPads with a home button, we just double tap on the home button. And now we can scroll through and find all the other apps that we're running and just flick up on these and that will actually close them off. And then we can come back to GarageBand and we're gonna be sure that GarageBand is gonna have all of the processing power because none of those background apps are going to be running. If you're on a newer device like an iPad Pro or an iPhone 10, you'll need to slide up and hold and then you get your list of apps here and you can do the same process. You can slide across and then just swipe these up to close them down, come back to your original app and you'll be good to go. Tip number five is something that I personally do. Now, I'm not actually 100% sure if this does anything, but it makes me feel better and it works well for me. And that is copying your files from your iCloud drive to your device when you're working on them. I just tend to find it's more reliable and here's how we do it. So we're here in my iCloud drive. We're gonna go into GarageBand and then we wanna actually work on this tune here, this 808 tune. So what I'm gonna do is tap select in the top right corner. I'm gonna tap on that file and the bottom here, we've got these four icons. The third one along, our folder icon is our copy. 
Audi. So I've tapped on that one, and now I'm going to tap on my iPhone and in GarageBand, and I'm going to copy this file across. I'm going to hit the copy button, and now if I go on my iPhone and GarageBand, then it's right here. And what this means is it's not going to have to be uploading or downloading at any time. It's just sitting here on my device. Now, it's, that means that it's not going to be backed up either, so you do need to be careful with this and maybe copy it back at the end, but I just seem to find it works better having it sitting here, not having to upload and download. Maybe it's my bad internet connection, but it just gives me some peace of mind. So that's a another tip for getting better performance here in GarageBand. Tip number six is to use our old friend Merge to merge our more complex tracks into an audio file, which means GarageBand has to do a lot less processing. So let's jump in and show you that in GarageBand. So here's a file that I'm working on at the moment. And if we go into the settings of this one in the plugins and EQ, you can see we've got a lot going on here. We're using Compressor, Bitcrusher, Overdrive. We've got a, a third-party chorus there, the FAC. We've got Visual EQ and we've got the Effect EQ on here. So what's happening is every time GarageBand is playing this, it's having to process all of those things. And if you've ever seen optimizing performance pop up, that is basically doing an automatic version of what we're going to do here. It's actually in the background. It is merging those into audio files so that when they play back, they don't have to use as much processing power. So how do we do this? Well, we just tap right here on the icon of this track, and then we use the merge function here. Now you can merge multiple tracks together, but if you just want to merge an individual track that may be using a lot of processing, we can tap merge in the top right corner here. It's going to normalize and duplicate that track. And then there you go. It's now a merged track and it doesn't have any of these plugins and EQs. It's got no processing on there. So it means that GarageBand doesn't have to use as many of its resources to actually play back that track. So if you've got especially a bunch of different tracks with a lot of plugins on them and you're doing your mixing, you're getting close to the end of your project, can be a good idea to merge some of those down into regular audio files before you do your mixing. It means you can't go back and change anything, but if you keep a backup copy, you'll be golden anyway. So there you go, another way to get better performance in GarageBand. Tip number seven, and I want to stress that you only really need to use this in more extreme circumstances. So your garage band's constantly crashing or it won't open or there's a song file that it keeps trying to load and it gets stuck halfway through and you can't get out to access anything. And that's to reset garage band. It's a simple process and here's how we do it. In our iPhone here, we're going to tap on the settings option and we're going to scroll down until we find that application menu. So it's in alphabetical order. So we'll be all good here. There it is. We'll tap on garage band and now we can can actually scroll down here and one of our options on this one is reset garage band so what we're going to do is we're going to tap that on now this won't delete your files this won't remove anything it will remove some of your custom sounds and any custom settings you have in there so if you've customized a whole bunch of sounds you may need to copy those back across from another project or from another device but for the most part it's going to leave things intact so we'll do that and then when we come back out here what we're going to do is close down our instance of garage band using the process we used before and now we're going to reopen it. We'll just search GarageBand here and open up GarageBand. And here you go. It gives us this opening screen as if we've just downloaded and installed it. But if we tap on continue, no problem. All of our tracks and all of our files are still there. But all it's done is reset all of those settings. And again, if you were stuck in a file, if it wasn't loading and if it was crashing, this can be a good way to get you back up and running. So there's our seven tips, but as promised, here's our bonus tips around how to free up space because freeing up storage space can be important for not only GarageBand, but all of the rest of your apps here in iOS. So let's start with the basics. That is removing any deleted items from our photos. So let's go into our photos first. Now you can go into your camera roll here. You can delete all of your different items that you don't want there. But once you do that, iOS doesn't trust you. It actually places them in a folder down here called recently deleted. So if we want to actually permanently delete this and free up space, we need to tap on recently deleted, tap on our select button in the top right, and then hit delete all here in the bottom left. We're going to tap delete all. It says, are you really, really, truly sure we are? So we tap delete all those videos and now they're gone and that's going to actually free up space. So if you've deleted a bunch of photos and wondering why you haven't got any free space, that could be why. We can do the same in our files app. So to get rid of any of our other files apart from our photos to do that, let's slide down here and we're going to search here for files and tap on the files app. And then in here again, we can go in and we can delete out any items that we don't need from wherever they are. But once again, we have this recently deleted items. So we tap on recently deleted. All of these things I've deleted and thought I'd freed up space. They're still here. So again, we tap select in the top right. And then down the bottom here, we can either recover or delete. We want to delete all these. We'll tap delete 
delete all. Am I really super duper sure? Yes, I am. I hit delete and bang, they're gone. And we've now freed up some more storage space on our device. And the third way to remove some items and to free up some space is to delete actual apps. So to do that, we're here in our settings. We're going to scroll down to the general tab and then on the right here or underneath or wherever you are, you're going to scroll down to iPhone or iPad storage. And this is what I showed you earlier. But what we can actually do is either enable offload unused apps, which means iOS will automatically delete those apps, but not your data. And then it will load them back up again if you need them in the future. Or you can actually come in and delete entire apps. So let's say I didn't want Audible anymore. I do, but let's say I didn't. I can actually tap in here and I can offload this app or I can actually delete this app entirely. Now, the other way to do that is from your home screen, you can tap and hold on an app and or any of these icons and then you can hit the X and then you can hit delete and that will get rid of that. Now, the ones that I recommend deleting and reinstalling quite regularly are actually YouTube and Facebook because they use a lot of background cache. So every time you play a video in Facebook or YouTube or even Instagram, it's going to actually keep some additional storage space. And if you go into your settings, you'll often find that your Facebook and your YouTube are using up a lot of space. So let's take a quick look here and see if my Facebook or YouTube are using up much at the moment. There you go. My Facebook is 466. I think I've cleaned my YouTube recently. So that's going to be pretty far down. Yeah, that's all the way down here, 161. But I've had these being over a gigabyte of space before. And by just simply uninstalling them and reinstalling them, all you need to do is log back in one time and you're good to go. It will remove all those cached items and free up a bunch of space on your device. So there you go, some simple ways to make sure you're getting the best performance out of GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad. If you've got your own tips about getting better performance, I'd love to hear from them. Drop your comments down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping over on the Studio Live Today icon, and I'll see you on the next video.